Hey nerds. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. So, here is a 2.8% Patters beer. Um, started out at 10.30. It, uh, it's an okay beer. It's got good yeast character, um, but it's really, I mean, it's pretty thin. Um, not super exciting, but it's a good, this is definitely a session beer. But, I brewed this beer specifically to be a yeast starter for a Belgian IPA. Um, which I then brewed and filmed bits and pieces of. So, let me, let me jump there. Cheers. Alright, here we go. Super Bowl Sunday brew day, because all the cool kids are doing it. I, uh, shoveled part of my little brew patio there. Um, it's kind of nice. It's actually like a windbreak with snow around all the sides. So here we go. Belgian IPA. Do it. Okay, so I wasn't going to make this like a whole brew day thing, video and stuff, but I've screwed it up enough to this point that maybe somebody can learn something. Um, so I undershot my mash temp. I, was, I didn't even know really what I was shooting for. 150-ish. Um, I think I ended up 145, 146. So, not perfect, not the end of the world. Um, not low enough that I decided I needed to do like a weird decoction or something. Um, I'm just going to let it roll for like 75 minutes. I stirred it a little while ago and all the bubbles are very rainbowy, which generally is kind of, I don't know, maybe it's an old wives' tale, but kind of generally means conversion is happening or happened. Um, so that looked good. I'm going to let it roll another 15 minutes. I'm heating sparge water right now. So I decided, well, I, I, hold on, I need to use my words. So I dipped into my super friends bag of people and when I, when I talked to, to my boy Victor Brews the other day, he was doing a sparge with the, the tinfoil with holes. This is tinfoil with holes. That's the sign language. I know sign language. Um, and I've never done that before. I've always just straight Denicon, boom, giant batch sparged. And I have no idea why I even want to try it, but I think I'm going to do the tinfoil with holes and run off and kind of like a modified fly sparge sort of thing. I've always been very anti-fly sparge for some reason. Um, kind of like anti-establishment, fuck the man kind of thing. But I'm going to give it a run today and just see. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, honestly, because my efficiency is always super good. And, like, the grain is always rinsed really well when I'm done. So this is basically just because I want to try it for some reason because I want to be cool like Victor and I don't have the beard don't have the vapey thing but I still want to be a cool kid so I'm going to try the the foil with the holes I guess I don't know so I don't know Yon do I guess hmm. and I have some tasty beverages so happy brew day okay so check this out I was looking for a bucket to I don't remember what I was looking for a bucket for to rinse something out I see a bucket on the shelf cool buckets are cool I find this. It is a bucket full of grain that I completely forgot about. Uncrushed grain. If you can, uh, I'd hold it up, but it's not really going to show on the camera, I don't think. I don't remember what this is for, but I guarantee this is an entire grain bill for a beer. I think it might be for a darkish lager. I think this might be Swain Pilsner malt, but I can't be positive. I'm pretty sure it is. I think it's Swain Pils and probably Bonlander Munich, maybe. So that's fun, because I don't know what this is. I think I can dig back through my phone, maybe, and figure out maybe a recipe that I know I didn't brew. Because I usually either put it on my phone or in Beersmith on my computer, so... Um, 
But that's a happy accident. I thought I was really low on grain. I got that order from Northern Brewer, but before that, I was like, I got nothing left. Like, I, I burned all my two-row in this beer that's mashing right now, and I thought, well, I don't have anything. Pretty sure this is for a dark lager, which then frees up the new Vienna and Munich I just got for Saison's. So... I mean, it's cool and everything. I just wish I would have remembered I measured out grain, because there's obviously different grains in this. Measured out grain, put a lid on it, set it on the shelf, and then brewed a bunch of other beers, I guess. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for complete details and limitations on certified pre-owned warranties. Hmm. I don't know what grain that is, but it fucking tastes good. Mm, 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 mm. Grain is delicious. If you don't eat your grain, you should. Right, here's our 75 minute mash. See the rainbows on the bubbles? If I'm to believe old wives' tales, that means we should be good to go with conversion. I've actually never done an iodine test in my life, and uh, I don't plan on starting now. So I could do it someday. It might be kind of fun, but if the bubbles are rainbowy, then I'm good to go. Okay, so here we go. Mash is done. I put some foil on top and jabbed some holes in with a screwdriver uh, because, I don't know, I guess that's how this works. So, hot bill. Move that thing. We have some leftover Centennial. Some leftover Amarillo. Some leftover Lubru approved Azaka. And some leftover Citra. So, uh, they're all going in because they're in the freezer and I want to use them so I can buy new hops. And right now my freezer is kind of full. So, we're blowing them all out. I think here, all told, there's probably eight ounces ish. Um, we are going to start out with one half ounce of Centennial as a first wort hop. Let's do it. Okay, so I am going to start running this off. Should I Vorloff? Are we Vorloffing? I have nothing handy to Vorloff, so Ixnay on the Vorloff. But actually, that looks pretty rad anyway. Um, can we do... Can we do color? We could do color. Let's check the color, kids. Color of the first runnings. Coppery orange. Uh, two ounces of Carafa 3 in this beer just because I have it. Um, and I kind of wanted it to be a little bit darker, almost red. That looks a little redder than I probably wanted. So let me... Okay, so now we're going to try and match flow. I've never done this before. I've always been, a, ever since I started all grain, straight batch sparge cake. So I've never had to worry about matching flow or any of this stuff. So now I gain a little respect for you fly spargers. Anyway, I'm going to watch this. I'll come back. Okay, so here's our mash. We're, we're matching the flows by, by watching that piece of grain on the side of the, the mash ton. Um, basically, if it, the level gets high or low from that piece of grain, that is my super scientific measuring method. Um, that's really dark, but that's how far we've gotten so far with half an ounce of hops. Um, I just took the first runnings gravity. It's like 1088, so probably higher than I anticipated. Actually, I didn't anticipate. I should look at Beersmith quick and see what we were actually supposed to get. Okay, so as with most of my hobby beers, there's really not a lot going on between like boil and end. So I'm right now just about to measure out the five minute hops, which is going to be whatever is left in this package of Centennial. Uh, I think it's like in 1.8 ounces, maybe. Um, but I'll throw it on the scale just, you know, for the fun of it. 1.804. And whatever is left in this package of Amarillo, which maybe ounce and a half-ish? Let's see. Ah, screw it. 
1.59 ounces. So what is that? Three and a half ish ounces of Centennial and Amarillo in a giant bowl. Smelling pretty damn nice. And then at Flame Out, we're gonna do the um, kind of the cool whirlpool. So I will do. I'll chill it down to like 180 ish. And then this is how much citrus in here. Ounce and a half of Citra and three ounces of Azaka. And that'll be that. Um, unless I want to dry hop. Maybe I'll save part of this. I didn't really think about dry hopping. Okay. So we just did uh, five minute hops. No video of that. Um, Three quarters ounce Amarillo, Centennial, and Azaka. And now I'm about to do the flame out hops, which will be like a, a 180 degree hop stand. Um, we're just going to do all of this Azaka, I believe. So we got like 2.1 ounces of Azaka. And of my ounce and a half of Citra I have left, I think what I'm going to do is use all of it. I don't know if that was a hard decision or not. I wanted to keep some Citra back for dry hop, but I think maybe I will just go uh, Centennial, Amarillo, and Azaka dry hop. Man, that does not smell terrible. So we're looking at... I would tell you how much dry hop this is, but it overloads my my cool little scale. So it's more than this scale will hold. So that's got to be good. And just because I wanted to show you guys how well I I plan, I uh, I'm about to run out of propane. I've got this burner at full bore and it's barely running. So I'm gonna run out of propane like right at flame out, which is you can't plan it better than that. Okay, so while we are whirlpooling doing a half hour hop stand probably. Um, I have this, but I'm actually running into a keg right over there. Um, this is the Patters beer that is based on my yeast starter for this Belgian IPA. Um, so I wanted to take a little gravity reading of it because it's low. Um, it's only 10.30 to start, so I don't know what it's gonna end up to finish, but I would guess it should be pretty low. That Trappist High Gravity is pretty, pretty crazy stuff. But I did, um, I did use oats in this beer, so that's eh, 10.08. So that's fairly, that's fairly good. I'll take that. Um, I think without the oats, it probably would have dropped down to like 10.04, 10.06-ish. And I'm really curious to see if this has enough body to even be goodly drinkable. Goodly's not a word. Um, but the color's okay. It's super pale. Um, this is basically just the uh, a little bit of that Swain Pilsner malt, a little bit of Carahel, and uh, some oats. And that's pretty much it. I didn't use any crystal in it um, intentionally. These grain bills are always super simple, so I don't know. Let's give it a shot. It smells good. It smells funky Belgian-y, um, which for such a little beer, the amount of yeast character is pretty crazy, actually, and with no carbonation, too, so. It's really light. Um, maybe too light. I will see. The Belgian character's there, but it's pretty watery, um, which I was afraid of with that little malt and no crystal, no nothing to kind of hold it up. Um, the mouth feels not awful. I think the oats helped that some. Shit. Man, it could be good. I'm going to... I'll keg it. We'll carb it. See if that changes anything. Maybe a couple weeks in the keg will kind of help the, the malt come back. But right now, 
Belgian-y up front, and then just nothing. There's no malt, really, to hold this beer up. Um, live and you learn. We'll see. Maybe it'll come out. We'll see. Okay, so after that, fermented at 73, 74 for a week. Um, I dry hopped it with like three quarters of an ounce each of Centennial and Amarillo and like an ounce and a half of Azaka. So the wort sample that I took um, tasted really good. Um, it has the tropical-y character that I, was, that I was really shooting for to kind of play with the, that Belgian yeast, which really worked out well. Um, I think there was a little clip in there of, of this beer going into the keg and, and the little gravity sample of it. Um, this beer's kind of growing on me. I wish I would have used a little bit of, like, Crystal 20 or something just to give it a little malt. Um, I think I might brew a similar beer to this again and dump a little bit of Crystal into it just to prop up the malt on it a little bit. Because um, it's just, at 2.8% or whatever it is, it just doesn't have quite enough body and quite enough... Um, malt to make it really a really interesting beer it's a it's a it's fine it's a fine pounder right now but it's nothing that i would be like hey here's a rad patters beer everyone drink it um so there's that um i figure that belgian ipa i will start to cold crash probably in two days um right now i have a starter a lager yeast starter going um, for the magical found grain bill that I have. Um, so that'll be going down maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. Um, and then I think I'm going to ferment that ambient temperature down here, which is like 62, um, and just see see how it does. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be perfectly fine. Uh, fermented out ambience, and then maybe try and chase a saison, maybe a smaller batch one, or maybe even a five gallon one. I've got some kegs that are in various levels of almost emptiness, so um, maybe try and ferment something out hot and fast, and then crash both a saison and that lager down at the same time, and then basically recharge all the kegs. Um, within a couple weeks, which would be nice. But anyway, other than that, uh, that's it. So, cheers. It's a Belgian IPA. Look for that in a couple weeks, probably. Uh, by the time I get that in a keg and carved and and uh, happy with it so far, I really like the yeast character that, that's in it, so that's, that's super encouraging. Um, and, uh, yeah. You gotta do, nerds. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Two point eight percent. Not bad. <laughs>